Welcome to another episode of the Multifamily Collective. I am your host, Mike Brewer, and today we're going in head first, head first into prop tech and innovation with a true trailblazer in the field. Whitney Kidd, who joined the Price Company in 2022 as the Senior Vice President of Innovation and Technology, truly embodies the future of the multifamily market. Whitney is the driving force behind revenue generating technology initiatives that serve the Price Company's extensive portfolio and push the broader multifamily industry forward. What sets Whitney apart is her incredible passion for merging cutting edge technology with operational excellence. She's not just about innovation for innovation's sake, she's focused on delivering tangible results that increase revenue, manage risk, and reduce expenses all through a customer first lens. Her leadership approach is deeply rooted in finding market specific solutions that make a real impact. But Whitney's influence doesn't just stop there. Before joining the price company, she co-founded Rover Score, revolutionizing how property owners and operators monitor and promote, promote internet connectivity quality in multifamily communities. Under her leadership, Rover Score scaled rapidly, reaching 50,000 student housing beds, 16,000 multifamily units, and 75 communities in her first year a testament to her visionary approach and strategic mindset. Before Rover Score, Whitney was a real pay, at RealPage, managing integrated business solutions across more than 70 products. Her tenure there was marked by impressive growth, including a 30% year-over-year increase in revenue for the business unit she oversaw, which translated into $20 million in recurring revenue. With over 15 years of experience in prop tech and property management, Whitney is also a founding board member of the W Collective, a leadership network for women in the student housing industry. She's a powerhouse of innovation, leadership, and forward thinking strategies, and we're thrilled to have her with us today to share her journey and insights. Now, as is tradition on the Multifamily Collective, this is where you go get your favorite beverage. For me today, it's free reign, and branded is the blend. This is the blend that has cayenne pepper and it's got a real kick to it, just like this conversation we'll have to it. We talk a lot about the W Collective, which is a tremendous, tremendous cause. And I urge you to tune in and catch this one. Whitney, welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. How are you? You know, I... I'm doing really good. As I mentioned right before we hit record, I've had a lot of coffee today, so very <laughs> hyper and alert and ready for this interview. <laughs> Let's go. I'm excited. I love it. And uh, how are things in your world before we dive into to our dialogue today? They are going well. We just wrapped up turn and move in for all of our student housing assets, which is an incredibly busy time of year. So we moved in over 30,000 residents within a couple of weeks. Yes, yes. So very tired, but very energized that it went well and excited to, to roll into leasing now. Well, you know, I so we won't get off on a tangent here too much, but my daughter uh, is going to Kinestas State University here in Georgia. Okay. And so we just went through the experience from a, a tenant's perspective or a resident's perspective. We moved my daughter in during that mad rush you're talking about. And oh, that yes. is... I applaud people in the student housing industry and how they choreograph the move and experience. It's unbelievable. It is an art. It really is. And we'll have to, we've got a community down in Kennesaw. So we'll have to talk later and, and see if she's there. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Well, um, Whitney, I, I really am excited about this conversation and I, I overarching premise for me talking about a topic, um, women in the industry and certainly things that you've put together uh, as an individual uh, inside of an organization, but also your passion for this. Uh, and I, I'm, I love that I get to be a part of putting this message out into the world uh, on your behalf uh, or a little bit. I know you put it out there anyway, but you've really dedicated your career to empowering uh, women in the industry and you started an organization called the W Collective. So if you don't mind, I'd love to start there by you telling the story about the W Collective and then anything else you want to add around that. No, absolutely. The, the W Collective is just an, an organization of women within the student housing industry and then multifamily market rate industry. And we're on a mission to connect and empower and build the next generation of women leaders within the space. And uh, the way it came together was quite organically, which is exciting for me because we were, I'll, I'll tell you how, you know, started with the mission and the passion of the W Collective. I was 23 years old. I was fresh. I had moved from the property to the supplier side. And they told me, Whitney, you're going to go to a conference and it's called NMHC Annual. And I oh. said, great. 
very excited, right? This was one of my first conferences industry-wide that I had attended at 23. And I'll never forget the feeling of walking into this conference. And we've all been there if you've been to annual, seeing this sea of blue suits. And I, I adore a lot of the, those people in the blue suits. They're great allies of ours and great partners. But it was overwhelming, to say the least, to be a young woman and to not see many people that looked like yourself. And uh, it was definitely something that is a core memory for me of, you know, how do we help people that are coming into the industry, you know, whether they be women or men, whatever that is, feel comfortable, feel confident, be able to collaborate and network with people that really inspire them. So that, that was my core memory of, listen, there's just got to be a way, right? There's got to be some way we can come together at conferences, outside of conferences and, and collaborate as women in business. And uh, so that's how the W Collective started. We got together with several executives in the industry, uh, some that have been mentors of mine for years, and uh, several emerging leaders like myself, Erica White, uh, Ashley Poyer, many others. We just all came together and decided let's let's do something about this, right? Let's let's make this a great experience for every person that walks into the conference for their first time and, and feels a bit lost, right? <laughs> so that's where it all came about. That's that core memory that I'll carry with me, and uh, super thrilled with all the the success we've had with the W Collective. Yeah, that I I do have to uh, validate that remark when you walk in for the first time, and it's always in this sort of opulent, you know, hotel mm -hmm. lobby or conference lobby. And you're right, it, it is a sea of suits, yes. and uh, and it's pretty intimidating, uh, especially if you're an introvert and you're in that environment. It is like oh, absolutely, <laughs> incredibly intimidating. Well, ta I I want to know. So you came together as a group. Um, I'm going to describe it as a charter. Maybe you sit down and you have this first conversation about what the mm -hmm. W Collective is going to be and how it will manifest itself in the way of initiatives or concerns that you put into uh, to the space. Talk to us about some of those things. Sure. Yeah. When we came together at first, it was simply just to bring women together. We started at the Interface Conference uh, for Student Housing that's held in Austin every year, and they gave us the opportunity to have a panel. And so that's really where this all kicked off. And uh, we came together and said, hey, that's, we're going to call it the W Collective. We're going to take it as far as we can, right? No pressure, but take it as far as we can. Uh, but it started with the panel. And even before we had developed our core values and mission as the W Collective, it, what we ended up chasing came quite organically as well. And it's because we had one question on the panel to wrap it up uh, our very first year. And that question is, if you had a choice to change the industry in any way that you could and impact the industry, what would you do? And we got this array of answers. And I, I remember, again, it was, I was still early in my career. I was a bit nervous because I, I told all the ladies prior, I said, I'm going to say something bold. And I, I was <laughs> terrified, right? This is a room again full of my peers, uh, mentors, all of the above. And uh, myself and a few others, we, we talked about family leave, maternity leave, family leave, adoptive leave. And that was, you know, at that time, I was a brand new mother, I was coming back to work, and I was really experiencing firsthand how challenging that was. Um, my mission and my, my, you know, ask from the industry is let's have maternity leave and family leave be improved. Let's put this on the private sector, not wait in the public sector, and really make a difference for families across the nation. Uh, and, and that kind of tailspin to where we're really working on family leave, fertility policies, as well as uh, helping parents and with child care costs and things that companies can do to help support parents. I, I love that mission. I, I think it's so Thank important. You. Families in America are sort of like, it's, it's sort of that one key stitch in keeping the fabric of America mm -hmm. together. And, and I, I love the fact that the private sector should participate in that. We definitely should. And you're driving something like that is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, a, it was definitely a team effort on that part. We were so excited after that first panel, the top 25 student uh, housing owner operators, we had over 15 make almost immediate changes to their policy awesome. within days and weeks of that conference, which was just, uh, it's, it's one of the best feelings. We all say it on the W Collective, the entire board. Just to, the fact that we were able to make a difference for so many parents was, it, it was just absolutely incredible. That that is awesome. I I have to believe in my heart of hearts. You know, despite this initial success, fifteen companies, amazing, making immediate change. 
Are there some barriers that you've run up against or some headwinds that you've run up against? And you know, what are some of those and why do you think they exist? And maybe some of the things that we can do as an industry to, to get over them or break through them. That's a terrific question, Mike. I would say the one that I hear most frequently and you know, what I love about multifamily and then the specific student housing industry that we have is you know, people are very collaborative, right? We like to work together. Mm -hmm. And you know, following all of the these big movements that we had with the W Collective, we received a lot of calls from companies saying, how did you get this through with your company? What, what was the process? What were you doing? And I would say the most common challenge that we heard was from third party managers, which at the price company, we, we own and we third party manage, uh, mm -hmm. but third party managers having challenges communicating the value of this to their ownership groups. Mm -hmm. That was some of the pushback they have. And I, and I understand that that is challenging, right? Those are your customers. They're people that you need to make sure are happy and, and you know, having a great experience with your services. So uh, what we did is we helped put in some data points and supportive documents just to help them better communicate that message to third party owners. Uh, and then some of them took the route of just taking a firm hand, right? Saying, this is our culture. This is what we believe in, right? If you, if you want to be a customer of ours, this is something that's important to us. So uh, to answer your question, I think it's really communicating that message, especially when you're, you're speaking with people that are very dollars and cents and sure. wanting to know how is this going to impact their bottom line. Uh, that is definitely what we saw the most feedback on when trying to make these transformations. I got it. For whatever it's worth to you, any of that documentation or those pamphlets or things that you've put together, um, yeah. digital in nature, we'll be happy to show uh, share them here on our uh, in our show notes. So, oh, that's terrific! Thank you, Mike. Yeah, definitely. I want to. So, in my mind, uh, you know, a, a happy team member is a productive team member. Uh, we have seen just a tsunami of new technology make its way into yeah. our multifamily space, and my imagination backed by some data people on the site level are very fatigued by yes. all the new technology <laughs> can you talk about i i think you've described it as a double edged sword but let's let's talk about technology making its impact in in uh, in the space absolutely and you know when we were when we were speaking prior we always talk about our why right why are we here why are we doing what we're doing and for me i i grew up working on property as many of us did and my why is i looked at everything that we were doing at the community level and saw so many opportunities for technology to come in and make that job easier it's already an incredibly challenging job dealing with residents right concerns managing the property and so for me, the reason I stepped into tech away from property management is I really wanted to make a difference in the lives of our community team. And, and you're right, we're, we're at an area where there's so much technology and this is only going to continue coming to market and have, having such value that our teams are a bit fatigued. So uh, it's definitely something that's, that's pretty challenging uh, across the board. And um, I'll tell you about a particular challenge because this is what keeps me up at night, right? Uh, so our, our recent innovation that we deployed at the price company and with some external customers was a full mobile experience. And again, a lot of you may think, oh, we've done that, right? Conventional has, has done that here and there. But again, in student, when we're doing everything all in one time, it's a much more aggressive cycle. Sure. And so we deployed this, this first-in-class tech in student housing for over 3,600 residents, eight communities, five different states, all within this one move-in cycle we just went through. And there were challenges, Mike. There really were. I mean, no. it was, and just like any technology implementation, right? I always say if somebody tells you there's not going to be an issue, you need to ask someone else, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because there's always going to be something. Uh, and so we deployed this great tech, right? Students would be able to go throughout the entire community with only their mobile phone. No keys, no fobs, no pen codes. First, a mobile first experience through and through. And we, we came across several issues with hardware, in-app experience, I mean, things that you expect to see. But given our time frame and the way that we operate, those, those items have to be fixed now, right? It's not something that can be fixed in two weeks. And so that was an extremely challenging deployment, but I'm so happy we're, we're on the other side, right? Um, we were able to face those concerns. We prepared the teams, let them know, hey, this, is, this might not be perfect on the first run, but let us work with you. Uh, and, and work through those items. So I'd always say just stay the course when deploying new technology and definitely lead by example, right? I think it's important that if things are going, you know, in a different direction, 
get boots on the ground, right? You're never too senior to get to the community and see what they're experiencing because there's really no good, better perspective of being there. Uh, and finally, in, this, in the stage we're in now, which I'm so ex excited about, is, is to celebrate the victories, right? Uh, once you've done these incredible things that have never been done before, make sure you take the time to celebrate with your teams and you know, all of the people that contributed to your success. Boy, I, I cannot stress or echo or repeat uh, what you said enough because just having gone through that with my daughter, um, let's say two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and watching the team members that were facilitating and choreographing and executing on that, that huge event. I, I just can't even imagine. So celebration, I yes. mean, kudos, kudos, kudos. You can't get enough kudos for that kind of thing. That's correct. Yes. It was definitely, I always say there's no better stress test for technology than a student housing turn, right? I mean, if you want to see if your product works, put it through a student housing turn and we'll, we'll let you know if it's good or bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I want to take one step back. You So you deployed this mobile first technology, which I think is wonderful. How do you, you individually and as an organization think about the tech experience or, or the tech stack that you're going to put in place. So let's use first, first mobile or mobile mm -hmm. first rather as an example, when you were sitting back thinking about putting that in place, what were the things you were asking yourself as an organization or as an individual? And how did you vet that particular platform or piece of technology that you put in place? That's a, that's a great question, Mike. And it's definitely an extensive process. And given because if we if we miss on these experiences, you're missing for an entire cycle, an entire lease cycle for the vast majority of your residents. So, you know, I would say first what we look at is what pain points are we trying to solve, right? What are we trying to do? Um, a mission that my team and I have been on for years and, and something I have wanted to do since the dawn of time, since I stepped on a student housing property was provide a contactless movement experience, right? Um, in today's day and age, we're getting tremendous amounts of data that this next generation of renter that we're serving now really wants flexibility, right? If they don't wanna speak to someone all the way from lead to lease, that is what we wanna provide to them. And so that's where the contactless movement experience came about is, you know, you, you just went through it with your daughter. There's long lines, there's you know, a lot going on, right? I mean, and that experience may not always be a positive one if you're standing out in the heat in Kennesaw, Georgia, and, <laughs> right? <laughs> Trying to get that's your right. keys and, and then maybe your brass key wasn't cut right, so you've gotta go back and you know, all those things that happen. So I mean, in addition to providing a great experience for our residents, which is what we were looking for, we also wanted to help our teams, right? So, I mean, yeah. just imagine the days of never having to cut a key again or reprogram a fob, just the time savings alone. was Those were our core missions when we came into this particular innovation exercise. Um, and we were able to solve for all that, which was exciting. It was really a great adventure. I, I love that. This may be an obvious question, um, or at least the way I'm going to state it, but maybe you can sort of unpack it a little bit. But how important it, is it that your your partner, that mean, meaning the supplier partner, is really engaged in that process and, and like fully transparent, fully candid about the good, the bad, and the ugly of their technology? How important is that? It's the most important, I would say. And, and that's why we're very particular of, of picking our partners and making sure that we understand, we know who they are as a company, what their mission is, and how they're gonna service our communities throughout these exercises. Uh, I'll give you a particular example, and, and I have to give them a shout out. It's uh, with GeoKey, was one of our providers mm -hmm. here that we utilized. And we had a property again that was having some concerns and you know they're really feeling the pain during turn. And I called the CEO, Brandon, and I said, Brandon, listen, You've never been to a student housing turn. I would love to have you down here. We're having some concerns. Can you come and be on the front lines with me? And he uh, said, absolutely. I'm booking my flight today. And that was just an incredible experience. And him being there just made the world of difference to the teams as well as us, you know, on the technical side, mm -hmm. trying to work through some of these challenges. So um, if we have a partner that's not able to be responsive, that's not able to really commit to the same mission that we're on, it can really degrade an experience for everybody that's involved. So absolutely a, a top priority for us when we're selecting supplier partners. Yeah, that. Thank you for sharing that specific example. Yeah. And wow, what a testament to to Brandon. Right. That is so fantastic. Uh, uh, let's talk about simplifying the work experience and uh, kind of unpack. I mean, that that seems obvious on its surface, but I have to imagine simple and easy are two very different things. So, yes. talk to us about that. 
Yeah, so what we're hoping to do is if, when we're looking at, you know, kind of the quantification of how do you simplify the work experience, it's how many actions do they have to perform in a day? And what can we remove from that list? That is what we're chasing, right? So in the example of the mobile first experience, it's cutting keys, it's having to perform lockouts, it's all of those things that really are just an additional layer that technology can solve for now. Mm. And, and so that to us is what we're looking at and how we're measuring to the simplification of the work experience, right? Taking things off their daily to-do list that's going to make their jobs easier, right? Not adding on more just because we've added a new technical feature or new, new product or software. Uh, so I'd say that's definitely what we're chasing. And, you know, as we go through that experience, some of that's tough to measure, right? Because you're going to get varying sure. feedback. But I always say lean on your community teams. I mean, you know, Mike, you've, you've been in this industry a long time. Something's not going well. They're going to tell you, right? They're never quiet about it. They're going to be very vocal. And that is something that we absolutely appreciate and warrant. We want them to be vocal. We want them to tell us what's good, what's bad, what could be better. Uh, and that's a really good way that we continue to track. Is this really simplifying the lives of our community teams and, and our residents at the same point? Okay. I want to stick right here for just a second, because what you just said, I agree hundred percent getting as much feedback as you can, as often as you can get it. How do you go about creating a culture where people feel mm -hmm. safe despite your titles or otherwise to give that feedback to you fully candidly? <laughs> That's a, it's a really good point that you have here because culture is going to be the, the big component. If they're afraid to come to the SVP of innovation and technology and tell me what's good and bad, I'm never going to get the feedback I need to help everyone be successful. And you know, at the price company, it's a big reason you know, I left the supplier side and came back to property management. And one of the largest reasons is because of the culture of the price company. It starts at the top and, and comes all the way down. And so I think it's it's making sure that your teams feel comfortable with you at all times. Um, here, you know, we all have titles, but really we're just working together on on the same mission. And I think that's really how you propel that is we're a team. I don't care if you're my part-time uh, groundskeeper or you're our CEO, right? We're all trying to achieve the same goals here. And that's something the price company has just done incredibly well. Um, you know, everybody says says this, but it really is true here. It feels like a family. Um, and we make sure that, you know, wherever you are in this organization, we are going to have you communicate with us and be transparent. Uh, one of the tools, it's a very simple tool, but one of the tools I used for this past innovation deployment with my tech team is we had just a simple G chat, group chat, right? And it's, uh -huh. if you're having issues, put it in the chat. Sometimes, you know, they don't want to pick up the phone and call you. That may be a bit much. It was a very simple tactic, but they could just, as they saw something or as they ha had an issue arise, put it in the chat and we would address it and give us feedback there. And I think having a group with their peers where they're all communicating gives them the bravery, right, to, to be transparent uh, and honest. That that makes complete sense. Sort of the wisdom of crowds and then the protection yeah. of that crowd in terms of being able to give you the feedback. I love that. And simple. Oh, How simple. Yes. <laughs> Very easy to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I want to go back a second. I, I'd written down a note. Um, you mentioned something that I, I refer to as management by walking around. I think you mentioned it as you've got to get down there on the front lines and, and you know throw your title out the window and let's just get down there in the, uh, in the gritty, uh, I guess, chaos of it all. I'm thinking yeah. multifamily and, and student housing at the same time. Um, is that something that is just innate in your DNA? Is that innate in the organization? Um, obviously, it's important, but talk to us about walking around and actually getting down into it and, and understanding from the site team members perspective. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's something that's very innate in me. Uh, my background and where I came from, my family were owner operators. So they had me walking the property. I always say it's a bit of a child labor issue, but around five <laughs> years old, right, I was knocking on the door trying to collect rent at five and six years old with, with my uh, with my parents. So uh, I feel it's very innate in me and it is absolutely innate at the price company. Um, our COO is always encouraging us to get on the front lines, no matter what position you're in. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have carried that throughout my career. Actually, I just published an article on LinkedIn and I encourage our supplier partners to do the same thing, right? Um, when I was a supplier, there were a few years where I just didn't get the, the chance to get back on the property and hear from them and hear what they needed. And so I, you know, at one point in my career, I said, there's no way I've, I've got to stop. I'm going to go and take a time every year 
and go and visit communities, right? And hear from them, hear how our technology is working for them. And I think that's so important for not only people in property management, but also the supplier partners. You, you just, it's such a wealth of knowledge to be on the ground and to, to hear from them, right? Um, there's no amount of discussion I can have it from an executive standpoint on what they're going through and what that experience looks like. So being there and seeing it firsthand is just the most valuable piece, I think, for both management as well as supplier partners. And, and is it fair to say, and maybe maybe you said this, uh, when you're sitting in a room with a bunch of executives and you've just visited somebody recently and you've learned about some things, it's it's much easier for you to articulate an issue that needs real decisive action when you've seen it yourself, you've experienced that right. thing yourself. It, it's just yeah. easier. It, it's much easier, right? I mean, when we went down to the community in Alabama and we're helping them, imagine if you couldn't enter your home, right? I mean, we're working with locks here. It seems simple, but it's not, right? I mean, that's the gateway to to a home. That's and right. so if you see that resident and that staff member have a moment where they cannot enter their own home, and especially someone in college, right? That this is their first experience on their own. And, you know, things are very uncertain and, and very exciting all at the same time. Um, being able to see that firsthand definitely helps from the property management perspective to be able to express that more genuinely to your supplier partners and to others, you know, and, and give them good learning lessons of, of here's why we can't have these mistakes happen or issues happen with the platform, because this is the impact it has on the end user. Definitely. I, I want to segue back. Um, we started out talking about the W, w Collective. Yeah. Um, segue back to talking about uh, empowering young leaders, uh, female leaders in the space. How do you, or you can couch it in the form of advice, or how would you speak to somebody that is making their way into the space and whatever position they're in, what kind of advice would, would you give to them? Just starting out, if they're just starting out in their career. Yes. Uh, so I live by three simple rules. And anyone that I work with from a mentorship capacity, I give them these same simple rules. They're not something I created. It's something I found very early in my career. But rule number one is if you don't go after it, you're never going to get it, right? Mm. So go after it. Don't be afraid. If you want to do something, if you're passionate about something, chase it aggressively. Chase it with everything that you have, even if it's uncomfortable at times. Make sure that happens. Um, second rule is if you don't ask, the answer is always no. I think many of us struggle with this early in our career and even later in our career where you feel like maybe asking may be an annoyance, right? If you want to ask for a promotion or ask for an opportunity, uh, I hear a lot of young, young leaders saying, well, I'm fearful that I'm annoying them or I'm, I'm fearful that they're, they're not going to care. Um, so I would say, do not be afraid to ask. The worst someone can tell you is no, that's it, right? And guess what? If they say no, that's okay. Find a new way to ask and then come back later. Uh, <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's rule number two. And that's been a big one with throughout my career. It's just making sure you're continually asking for what you need and the experiences that you wish to see. Uh, final is if you don't step forward, you're always going to be in the same place. So um, I never encourage people to job hop or change. But if you're in a moment in your career where you feel stalled or you feel that you don't have the support and that is hindering the ability for you to grow, you need to find something and someone that is going to support your growth and help you move forward. So again, don't be fearful of change. Don't be fearful of finding a new direction because if you're not moving forward, you're just staying in that static space. I love that. I wrote those three rules down. We're going to share them. I, oh, thank you. But, but it comes to mind uh, as it relates to those three things, you, you strike me as somebody who is deeply invested in um, self-development, self-care, things of that nature. I, I'm curious, uh, do you have a hero in your life, somebody that you look to emulate? And if so, you don't have to name them, but what is it about them as a person that you are trying to incorporate into your own life to present out into the world so you show up as a beneficial presence? Well, that's that's a really impactful question, I think. And if I have to look back, I think I have many heroes. And okay. I think that's important um, because for me, I'm in a pursuit and I encourage others to consistently learn, right? Never take your foot off the, the gas, always be seeking new education. And so I'll, I'll mention a few and I'll, I'll give them shout outs. Um, one is, is Lynn Musel. He is the CEO of PayReady and was one of my early stage bosses where I had just transitioned from, again, the property side to the supplier side in a sales role. 
and I, I was terrified. And I'll, I'll say he's one of the best leaders that I've ever had the, the pleasure of working with and really took the time to invest in me and help my career move forward, right? One of those people that's an advocate and helped me move forward. Uh, so I have to give him a shout out. He's just incredible all around and still is from what I hear um, in his leadership capacity. Uh, the second is, is going to be Steve Wynn, uh, who I worked with at RealPage, the, the former CEO of RealPage. Mm -hmm. He was the toughest leader that I ever worked for, right? It, Lynn was great. He was so supportive. When I went to Steve, totally different uh, side of the spectrum. He was tough, but in the best of ways, right? He taught you the hard lessons and he taught you what it really means to do things that others may say are impossible. And I, I really enjoyed that about him. I thought that was just absolutely terrific. Um, and then my final, I've got, I told you of many, because I think it's important to learn from everybody that you have the pleasure of working with. But my final is my current CEO, Donna Price. She is the only female CEO in all of student housing. She is an absolute powerhouse. And um, she has built a culture here along with the rest of the team that is just something that, that attracted me. I came out of a, a company that I founded to be here because I was so passionate about what they were doing and the mission that she was on. Uh, so I'd say those are my top three, and I'll probably have three more if we talk again soon. But those are the ones within my career that I really think about as my heroes and people that taught me the greatest amount about success and, and how to power through when times are hard and, and how to best support your teams as well um, and make sure that you're helping others along the way. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that was completely out of the... Out oh, of the it's okay. <laughs> I, I am always very much inspired by where and how others are inspired in, in their life. And, and certainly if we can glean lessons from those individuals and or books or whatever you've read or, or, or experienced over your lifetime is very valuable information, at least as far as I'm concerned. So Agreed. Um, let's talk about, so going back to the W Collective, um, you had this early inning success with introducing this, uh, this leave uh, uh, policy or leave policies or variations of that policy mm -hmm. in different organizations in student housing. Are, what are your current uh, initiatives and or discussions and how do you want to impact the industry next? Yes. And that's always the tough one, right? What do you do next after you've had <laughs> such great success and impact? Right. And uh, so what we are, are hyper-focused on, our initial focuses were family leave and fertility coverage. And, and really, we focused on those because it's the right thing to do. But also, from a business standpoint, if we're not supporting parents, our population growth and our birth replacement rate is going to continue to be below the levels that it needs to be, right? And if we want a booming economy, if we want people to live in our apartment homes, people have to have more children, right? That's just the... The, the blatant nature of what's happening. So those were our first two, right? We really wanted to make sure that we were helping, you know, continue that. Um, the one now that we're really focused on, and we've got a session upcoming at NMHC Student, is, is around childcare. And, and that's a newer topic for us. And, and the reason that this came about is, is we, we were all sharing within the board a recent study that came out that uh, it observed that if you have two children, if just two children, the cost of child care now exceeds the cost of housing in all 50 states. And wow. we hear a lot of attention right now around multifamily and, you know, how we've been raising rents. And there's we all know the, the topics that are going around. But I don't think there's enough attention. And, and the board doesn't either with the W Collective around the cost of child care. Uh, and we feel that's a, a major contributing factor to why women are leaving the workplace, because a lot of families are having to make that extremely challenging decision of do we pay a vast majority of our salary upwards in some states of 30 percent of your earnings or do we stay home? Um, and oftentimes it's it is the mothers. I mean, that's just the reality that have to make that choice and stay home with their children. Um, thankfully, I have an amazing husband and he chose to stay home, but we faced that same challenge when we had children. We had to make a hard decision. Um, so our, our new topic that we're really just driving and, and mission is, is to find ways to help support the child care cost, whether that's through our own organizations or through others that can help, you know, assist in, in that hard time of life. Wow, that is an astonishing stat. That is it, it is scary, Alma. <laughs> yeah, it it truly is. I I mean, I have three children. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I know exactly. Yeah. We, we made the same decision. My wife stayed home to raise our children because yeah. childcare in the early innings was just incredible. So, right. 
how do we at a multifamily media network, how do we support your effort in terms of getting your message out? I, I'm inspired and I, I want to help in any way that we possibly can in promoting the message. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. And, and that's yeah. very grateful of you. Uh, so we are always sharing different types of content. I'll share the W Collective LinkedIn group that we have where we collaborate. Uh, I, what I'd also love to send you is we do an annual scholarship as well for emerging leaders to come into the space. And so I'd love to share that with you. It's every year it comes out in about February because the conference they get a scholarship to is in April. They get okay. the opportunity to speak on a panel with executives. They get a fully paid compensation to go and experience the conference. And so I would love to share all of that with you as we're launching these initiatives. And and just the, your voice alone, Mike, I think would be an incredible help of, of just sharing the message of what we're trying to achieve here. Oh, all day long. That's yeah. uh, I, I really am inspired by by your passion, by what you've started there, and what you are now uh, currently working on. That's just uh, an incredible team to stand behind. Thank so, you. Yeah, definitely. I uh, so as we sort of draw to a close here. Um, I always like to give people the invitation to, to tell us where you're going to be in the wild. Uh, in other words, coming up conferences or things of that nature and or where people can find you online and learn more about you as an individual, the organization you work for currently and or in, in this case, the W Collective. Yes. Well, where I'm going to be in the wild is quite busy here in <laughs> September and October, as I'm sure it is for you, Mike. Seems sure. like we're going to be in Vegas pretty consistently based on the conference schedule. So uh, my next conference that is on deck is the Blueprint Conference in Las Vegas. I'm very honored. I was invited to speak uh, regarding investment strategies and tech strategies for niche real estate markets. Mm -hmm. And very honored for that team to, to have me in to speak. It will be my first time at the conference and several of my uh, colleagues as well are going to be attending. So thrilled to be there. But you can also find me at all the other conferences, NMHC Optech, uh, we'll be at the Entrada Summit, where I mean, we're going to be all over the place in the in the next couple of weeks, so which is very exciting. So that's where you can definitely catch me out in the wild in person, and would love to connect with anybody that that would like to meet me. Um, in addition to that, uh, our company is the Price Company, based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. You can find us at www.tpco.com. We also have a consulting arm that handles all prop tech deployments. And that is called Iris Technologies, uh, which is a very exciting venture. You can find us at irisinnovates.com. And that's just helping all of these managers that have to deploy these challenging prop tech uh, uh, <laughs> projects on their own have someone with expertise to assist them. Uh, so both of those areas. You always find me on LinkedIn. That's something I check very frequently. So please connect with me there. Send me a message. I will do my best. I think we all know sometimes that inbox gets a little, little messy. <laughs> but uh, you can definitely connect with me there and, and would love to collaborate with anybody and, and help anyone if you're on a venture of, of trying to improve your family leave policy um, or looking to deploy the next uh, latest and greatest technology in initiative. Well, thank you very much. I Before we bring it to a full close, I, I just, look, this is the first time you and I have ever talked in person. I just <laughs> want to acknowledge you as a human. I uh, I just admire what you're doing. I've learned so much today uh, as it relates to, to your mission uh, and your vision and your passion uh, and how you're doing that uh, using W Collective as a conduit. Um, that I'm just inspired by you and I, I appreciate you investing time with us here today. Well, thank you, Mike. I, I feel the same. I told you prior, I have admired you and your work from afar for many years. Um, when I was a supplier, I remember when you started, you know, back in the day at Radco. So thank you so much for taking the time and, you know, really grateful to be able to meet you and, and discuss a little bit about what we're doing over here with the W Collective and, and the Price Company. I love it. And I look forward to meeting you in real life in person. Yes. <laughs> in Vegas. So In Vegas, very soon. All right. Take care. Thanks, Mike.